Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today this film is all about me making my trebuchet. So it was done over a year ago, in fact, and it was put together for the computer games company when they launched Age of Empires 4. They commissioned me, paid me, to make the trebuchet. They wanted it optimised for shooting all sorts of weird stuff, so it was designed to do that, not designed to be a proper trebuchet in that sense. But nonetheless, it was proper enough for me to get excited about and to really want to build it. So I filmed it. And this film is all about that. But then there's another couple of things that I do need to add, which is at the end. So stay to the end and you'll see what I did with it next. Hi, it's Todd at Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And I have got a medieval build that is really special. And it's going to take me a little while because today I am building a trebuchet. Now the first question is, why the heck am I building a trebuchet? Well, Thankfully, I've been paid to do it, which is absolutely brilliant. So it's the release of a computer game, and they're using this for the PR. So well, they're going to do that, and then I get to mess around with it, which is brilliant, because I've never made one this big. Never made one this heavy either. So the base is now finally done, which is great, but it's all in solid oak. So this thing weighs, and when I say weighs a ton, I mean, it will weigh a couple of tons by the time it's done. But also, earlier on, I said uh, it was massive. Well, of course, in the world of trebuchets, it's not massive. You know, it really isn't. But for me, it's a big build. I'm used to crossbows and things like that. So, you know, it's a big one for me. And it is, as I said, going to be six and a half, maybe a bit more metres tall. Now, historically, Edward III apparently had one with about a 30 metre arm on it, something like that. You know, that's big. But this is now going to throw a stone, uh, maybe six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 kilos, something like that. It's going to go up 35, 40 metres in the air before it comes back down again. So that is, again sort of about 10 storeys high. Dropping a 10 kilo weight from 10 storeys is gonna be awesome. So it might not be the biggest one ever, but it's still gonna be really interesting. And I'm gonna be able to test all sorts of things on it, like accuracy, uh, baskets of rocks, small rocks, uh, weird payloads and things like that. It's gonna let me learn an awful lot more about trebuchets. And one of the reasons it's gonna do that is because there's a friend of mine, Jem Stansfield, who is like double the intelligence of anybody else I've ever met incredibly sharp guy. He's done all the maths on this and the working out. So I can build the thing, but I really wanted to know before I began what size payload, what size arm, what kind of delivery that's going to give. And GEMS allowed me, estimated, but allowed me to understand roughly we're going to be looking at 85 to 100 meters for a six or a seven kilo weight. So, you know, that is going to be fun to play with. But in the meantime, I'm going to go home I'm going to sleep very well and have a long hot bath and tomorrow we're going to start in the A-frames. That's it. Last of the cross beams. Every timber on here is going to be marked so we know how to put it back together again.
it's the end of the day now and the A-frames are up and it's been hard because these timbers are seriously heavy. But the next thing that's going to go on, the next thing we're going to make is the arm, the bit that actually throws the rocks and the objects, whatever. And that is really going to be a good thing to see because that's what I'm excited about. This big, big bit of timber here is just the start of it. It's got to get thickened, it's got to get lengthened. And just like the medieval ones, I'm making it up out of pieces. And just like them, I've got to get to work. See you later. working on the arm here which is made of lots of different pieces of timber not oak but ash because it's unbelievably tough but it's all going to be very carefully glued and screwed and bolted and pegged together to make sure it doesn't come apart Yesterday, I fabricated the steel frame for the counterweight bucket. Today, we're lining it with oak. It is going to look so good and so cool. I'm going to start work on the pin now that goes on the end of the arm. Now this is a really important part of the machine because the arm comes around but attached to the end of it is a sling and the sling goes onto the pin and as the arm rotates around the sling slips off and the projectile, the rock, whatever, shoots. But the angle that that pin is on the arm is really important. So I have to make this strong enough, that's why I'm doing it in steel, and variable enough so that I can change the angle of that pin so the sling slips off at the right moment. So that way we can adjust it. The trebuchet arm is nearly, nearly done. And that's this massive beam I'm sitting on here. But the release mechanism I made yesterday is this piece here. So you can see you've got a pin, but I don't know what angle it wants to go at. So that moves and you can lock it off with this screw here. So I'll take you to the end of the beam and I'll show you where it fits. The whole release mechanism just gets pushed onto the end of the arm and bolted in place. Another day done and the arm is completely done. So tomorrow morning, first thing, we're gonna lift it into the machine. And for us, that is just so exciting because it's gonna to totally change the, the way the whole thing looks. A real big moment for us. There's a big, there's a big diameter and a small diameter on that. Make the small diameter next to the beam. We're getting there, but one of the components is a bit too big, so we're just changing that now, bit of a rest, and we're getting it straight back in.
And that is in. The arm is in. So we need a few minutes to remove the scaffolding and then, well, we'll have a look at it. See you in a minute. Are we ready? Yeah. Yeah. Same again. <laughs> Fabulous. Just got to do this. God, it's easy. Well, it's smooth. Well, that has been a day. So, the arm is in, the bucket's on, everything's moving. Time to look at the winch. Just back from my own workshop now, where I've been making all the pieces for the winch. That's what I'm surrounded by here. So I'll put it together and you'll see how it works. We are so, so nearly there now. The winch system with its ratchet has been installed here. So I'll just show you how it works. Basically, crank it around and there's a tooth here that stops it rotating back the other way. When you want to go more, you just keep moving it around. So it's a slow process. But you want it to be slow, because if it's slow, Powerful. The tractor has arrived and we're finally taking it outside. We're going to load it up and shoot it for the first time and it better be amazing, so cross your fingers. Not sure how many times in a day I'd want to do this. Here we go. Three, two, one. So I don't know how much of that you saw, but they went pretty much up, as in pretty straight up, not forward. There's just an adjustment on the pin on the end of the arm. That's all it is, because this is the first time we shot it. We're going to adjust it, we'll go again. Here we go again, it's lighter this time, so seven kilos, and I changed the pin angle a bit. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. So it still went really, really high up in the air. So we're gonna adjust the pin angle again, but that was really positive. Got my rangefinder out and it is 50 meters. 50 meters, which it's not bad, but it will throw a lot further than that. We just got to fiddle around with it. It 
works. Whoa! That's it, it's done, it's finished. Probably the coolest thing I have ever made. This is just epic. Three, two, one. <laughs> Now you know that I get excited about trebuchets, you know that I get thrilled by shooting them. What you saw there was me in work mode. That was, well I do have a real job, honestly. That was me observing and watching and learning and making sure it was going to do what it needed to do because in three days time that was going to be part of a PR stunt. And of course that's why I have it now, because it was a PR stunt. It was there for an hour and a half doing its thing. After that, it's just waste. It's just rubbish. It's something they don't want. I solved their problem. I disposed of their waste. And now I have a trebuchet. And this is the kind of stuff I get to do with it. Well, there's only one way to find out up close what carnage our trebuchet does. Is it? Is it? Is it? Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Oh! Well, I think it's fair to say that didn't go entirely to plan. Here we go. Go! Whoa! Sometimes you get to do something epically cool, and that was it. I mean, look at this. It is awesome. It is just a sea of little white dots, all 100 of them. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with my trebuchet and a whopping big dart. Well, two of them, actually. Fire! It worked! So what I'm going to present to you today is utter fiction. Oh, ha, 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 ha. 